Have you ever had a day that just didn't seem to go your way? Maybe the car wouldn't start, or traffic was backed up, or the phone died in the middle of an important call? Any of these things might cause even the calmest of people a little twinge of stress. And for some, they might make the rest of the day feel completely out of control. But why? Is there something about the way our brain is wired that can sometimes make stressful situations feel even worse? According to Dr. Rick Hansen, the brain is constantly working to meet our three core needs of safety, satisfaction, and connection. And here, he explains one reason why we feel stress when these needs aren't being met. Uh, as animals evolved, uh, including human beings today, the brain developed essentially two ways of going about meeting our three core needs for safety, satisfaction, and connection as overarching umbrella terms. On the one hand, when there's a basic felt sense of those needs being met in one's core, in other words, a basic sense of safety and satisfaction and connection, the brain defaults to its resting state, an equilibrium state, a sustainable homeostatic condition in which the brain directs the body to repair itself and refuel itself and recover from bursts of stress. And in terms of avoiding approaching and attaching in three broad terms, the mind is colored with a, with a sense of peace, contentment, and love. Peace in terms of the safety system, contentment in terms of the satisfaction system, and love in terms of the connection system. Okay, that's the good news. I call that, the, that's the responsive mode of the brain, a term that I and others have used. And I think of it as the green zone. Okay. On the other hand, Mother Nature has endowed us with another setting, you can think of it this way, in the brain, which is where we go when uh, we experience in our core that one or more of our fundamental needs is not met for safety, satisfaction, and connection. Then the brain fires up into its fight or flight uh, stress response mode, or it goes into an intense freeze mode uh, you know, of immobilization. That's the red zone. Um, in that red zone, which is not meant to be sustainable at all, it's a brief burst. Uh, in the red zone, um, the body burns resources faster than it takes them in. Uh, bodily systems are really disturbed. Uh, there's a fundamental sense of deficit and disturbance. And long-term building projects like strengthening the immune system are put on hold. And in terms of avoiding approaching and attaching in three broad terms the mind is colored with a sense of fear frustration and heartache there's a technical term you know what i think of allostatic load the idea that repeated red zone experiences uh, gradually accumulate a burden on physical health as well as mental health and certainly just everyday well-being and to again bring it down to earth we all know basically what it feels like to be mildly peaceful, contented, and loved and loving. It's kind of a basic state of global well-being. And we all know what it feels like to be fearful, frustrated, or to have that ache in our heart. And, you know, we're tough critters. We can handle brief, uh, occasional bursts of red zone stress. But it should not become a way of life. But unfortunately, I think mild to moderate red zone stress, let's call it the pink zone, all right? Uh, you know, is really not good for us. Dr. Hansen's red zone, green zone analogy is helpful for understanding how high stress levels can affect the brain. And it's a good reminder that we should introduce a bit of rest and relaxation into our lives every so often. During this week's webinar, Dr. Hansen will give us a four-step strategy we can use to stay out of the red zone. And he'll talk about how to rewire your brain to have more positive experiences and why that can create lasting brain change. The webinar is free to watch when it's broadcast. Just click the link below to sign up. <music>